Donald Trump is the king of cancel culture. I love pointing out these just ridiculous, glaring contradictions uh, among those who still believe that the left-right spectrum is a good way of breaking down politics as opposed to recognizing that we have one party in America. It has a Republican wing. Uh, there's the Republican wing of the American Socialist Party and the Democrat wing of the American Socialist Party. And they just have different flavors of, of, of bullshit. That's it. Donald Trump is the king of cancel culture. It's funny to hear conservatives rail against this because cancel culture has risen up as a somewhat liberal triggered SJW phenomena as they are better organized with it than conservatives are, right? They actually get things done. Petitions, boycotts, and actually getting people taken off the air by letter campaigns, angry letter campaigns. They actually do that. But really, what is going on here it's someone with an emotional response saying i don't want to hear that and therefore i don't want anybody else to hear that so the uh quote the story here starts with a quote from white house press secretary kaylee mckenney from monday president trump stands against cancel culture which seeks to erase our history which of course is why the Jeffrey Epstein statue in Albuquerque is such brilliant trolling of Donald Trump. Oh, you want to remember our history? Well, we better preserve the statue of Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, whoops. The city of Albuquerque took it down. Uh, well, now we need we need statues of, of Pol Pot and Mao and Hitler and Stalin so that we can really remember our history through statues. So talk of cancel culture defined as the popular practice of withdrawing support for canceling public figures and companies after they have done or said something considered objectionable or offensive is everywhere these days. Uh, social justice warriors are waging a dangerous cancel culture revolution, screams the headline in the New York Post. Washington, Jefferson, Hamilton, who's next on the statute cancellation tour, demands Fox's Greg Gutfeld. Democrats are driven by this radical cancer culture left insists Representative Jim Jordan, Republican from Ohio. So perhaps it isn't surprising that the left, left bashing president has jumped on this particular culture wars bandwagon. But here's the hypocrisy. Donald Trump has embraced cancel culture his entire life. I cannot think of another politician or public figure who has spent more time to, trying to cancel critics than the thin-skinned former reality TV star in the Oval Office. Over the years, Trump has called for the boycott of leading U.S. brands such as Macy's, Apple, and Harley-Davidson, among others, because they displeased him in one way or another. He forces those around him into non-disclosure agreements and then threatens them with legal action if they dare speak out against him, including his own niece, Mary, whose forthcoming tell-all book the president is desperately trying to cancel. And we have an update on that story today. We'll get to in a minute. This approach has only been amplified since he came into office, a period that has found him publicly and repeatedly trying to cancel both social media companies, quote, we will strongly regulate or close them down, and network news channels challenge their license, while calling for prominent journalists who have upset him, such as Chuck Todd and Jamelli Hill, to be fired. In private, Trump has gone much further. According to his former national security advisor, the president wants some journalists to be executed. Then there is Colin Kaepernick. The president not only supported the benching of the former San Francisco 49ers quarterback, but insisted NFL owners sack other players too. Quote, wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when someone disrespect this disrespect or flag to say, Get that son of a bee off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired. He ranted at a rally in September 2017. Trump's interest in silencing his opponents, the very thing cancel culture's conservative critics to cry, is more pronounced when he's targeting members of his own political party. Take Mitt Romney, the sole Republican senator to vote for impeachment, in February, faced an intense backlash from both the president and his ideological allies. Skipping ahead here, 
There are then there are the public servants who dared testify against Trump during the House impeachment hearings. Ambassador Gordon Sondland and Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman were both canceled by the president for having the temerity to speak out. Trump even canceled Vindman's brother for the crime of being his identical twin. So I wonder then, is this having a backlash effect? At, at some point, they have to, all of these criticisms, they have to have some kind of Streisand effect. Hey, Trump is saying, don't listen to all these people who are telling, uh, telling you that I'm a turd. You know, oh, there are lots of people telling me that you're a turd? I, I didn't know that. Thank you for calling that to my attention, President Trump. You see how that works? And so this is really exciting to see that this might be coming to the book, the book about Trump's family. But first, so right now in 2020 here in the United States, we have an anti-free speech authoritarian egomaniac sitting in the White House backed by a cultish political movement steeped in grievance politics, constantly cracking down on critics, dissenting voices, and unpopular opinions. Donald Trump and the Republican Party have never stood against cancel, cancel culture. To the contrary, they embodiment. So, from CNBC.com, fun follow-up on the story we would have covered yesterday about this. Now, the news is a little bit different. Instead of the book being held, According to CNBC.com, New York appeals court clears the way for a publisher to distribute tell-all book by President Trump's niece. A New York appeals court cleared the way Wednesday for a publisher to distribute a tell-all book by President Donald Trump's niece over the objections of the president's brother. Now, of course, why is the president's brother doing this? Well, maybe less people will criticize Trump if if he can say that he's not doing it himself. He's got a proxy. Like, duh, this guy, his brother, totally acting on his behalf. Although the book was scheduled to be published on July 28, Simon & Schuster said thousands of copies of the 75,000 copy first run of the book had already been sent to bookstores and others. The appeals ruling, though, left in place restraints against Mary Trump, the book's author, and the president's niece after the president's brother said in court papers that she was part of an agreement among family members not to write about their relationships without permission. Hmm. The title of the book is Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man by Mary L. Trump, PhD. And of course, got to put PhD on the, uh, on the cover there for credibility. Definitely supporting that move. New York Appeals Court cleared the way Wednesday for the book. And this is, you know, I I, I wonder, like, does Trump just want more people? To, I mean, Trump seems to be able to uniquely capitalize on negative attention. So maybe this is deliberate. Maybe he wants everybody to read this book so that he can use it as a talking point later and discredit it. I don't know. I have to respect Trump for so enthusiastically taking on so much hatred directed straight to him. As for his version of cancel culture, we know he's a bully, and this is his way of doing it, and not calling it cancel culture. But it's the same kind of problematic nonsense that we get from SJWs and liberals who, just like conservatives, have no solid intellectual ground to stand on when defending the coercion of the state as objected to by libertarianism. And so when you don't have an argument, you can distract, you can make side points and intellectual fallacies, and hope that the Streisand effect is something that you can capitalize on the negativity from. But at some point, I don't think this is going to hold up for Donald Trump. And I am actually very much looking forward to reading 
too much and never enough.